Well, praise God. It's good to meet together in the house of the Lord. And, um, uh, yeah, you can. Push up the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was just gonna open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we can praise your name and, and worship you. And Lord, we, we know you always look at the heart and you see our worship that comes from our hearts, Lord. And that is the worship that pleases you. We can have all the fancy songs and all the best equipment and everything going, but simple worship that you love is the worship that comes from our hearts. Each of us individually, as we live our lives each day, you're always looking at the worship that comes from our heart, Lord. And that is the worship that pleases you. You always look at the individual. It's good to see 50,000 people gathered together worshiping you. But out of that 50,000, you're always looking at the one. You're always looking at each individual person because you've created us individual. You've created each of us and you know us by name and you know every hair on our head and everything. So Lord, we thank you that we can worship you and we give you praise. And Father, as we look at uh, the small message today from your word, we pray that you would speak to us. And we pray, Lord, for all those who've been watching this video live or uh, the video later on in the week. We pray for everyone who hears your word online that in, in the comfort of their own home as they've been watching this, we pray that you would speak to them. Um, you might be at home today, you're not in a church or anything. We welcome you to come to this church if you're not in a church and invite your friends and family and so may you be blessed as you watch this may you be blessed with the presence of god as you hear his word and we ask it in jesus name amen amen so i'm in the book of acts today we've got a short message from the book of acts and it's in uh, chapter two and it's we're looking at verses 42 to 47 and this is a picture of the early church, the first church that was formed when Jesus ascended to heaven. So this is the first church ever. <laughs> so I thought, with this being our first meeting, it'd be good to look at the first church as well. And, and this really is a, a blueprint for every church, past and future to come. This is the blueprint for every church. And this church was formed... Um, on the, the day of Pentecost, when there was all, all the disciples and was in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then Peter went out into the street, uh, so Peter was a street preacher as well, <laughs> Peter went out into the street and he started to preach the gospel, but how many know that he only went out to preach after he'd been filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if we can't do it in our own strength, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And how many know if they needed the power of the Holy Spirit, we need it even more today, because we can't do it in our own strength. And so Peter was preaching the gospel in the streets, and when he finished preaching, um, they asked him, what must we do to be saved? And then he preached the gospel. He told them how to be saved. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. And so we have it there. How do people get saved? By, by repentance, by being baptized, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and then it said in verse 14, with many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, and he said, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. How I many know 
This generation is corrupt as well. It was corrupt 2,000 years ago, and it's even more corrupt today. So it's the same message we have to preach. He said, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And then in verse 41 it says, those who accepted his message were baptised, and 3,000 were added to their number that day. That's every street preacher's dream, <laughs> to see thousands responding to the gospel. But how many know the Bible says that all heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents? So there was 3,000 sinners accepted Christ. So how much rejoicing was in heaven that day? You know, 3,000 today received Jesus. Let's get the buffy on. Let's have a party. And there's a big party in heaven. They were rejoicing over 3,000 sinners. But you know what? There was a party in heaven the day you got saved, the day I got saved. That day when we received Christ, there was a party. Fancy having a party in heaven over us. And it wonderful, isn't it? But that's, what, that's reality. That's why I'm, every time someone comes to Christ, there's a party in heaven. So the day in 1986, when I got saved at the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship in Up Holland Hall, Wigan, I only went for the free meal, but I got saved that day, there was a party in heaven. And it's the same for you and for me. Every day, over one sinner that re repents, there is rejoicing in heaven. All the angels, how many angels are in heaven? Thousands, thousands, I don't know how many there are, but they all rejoice and praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. <laughs> so, now, so 3,000 were added to their number that day. And here we have, the church was birthed and it was formed. And now, let's look at what it says. Verse 42, and it says, And they devoted themselves. Who's they? The 3,000 who've just accepted Christ, plus the disciples and, and the other followers of Christ, they're meeting together, and it says, and they devoted themselves. See, it has to come from ourselves. I can't force you to do anything. You can't force me. God gives us all a free will and a free choice. If I don't want to give, I won't give. Uh, if I don't want to go there, I won't go there. God never forces anything on us. And we should never force anything on others as well. It gives us all a free choice. And it says, and they devoted themselves. So they devoted themselves. They committed themselves. They said, you know what? I'm going to commit myself to this church. They made the decision. I'm going to commit myself. And for anyone who's watching... Um, and you're from another church, you're involved with another, another church, we will all should have the same attitude. So whatever church you're involved in, just say, you know what, I'm going to commit myself to that church. I'm going to devote myself, my time, my life to that church. And, but, but if anyone forces you to do it, walk away. <laughs> because if anyone forces you or tries to make you do more work in a church, walk away. Even you know, it has to come from ourselves. And so it says they devoted themselves to what? To the apostles' teaching. So they thought, you know what, I'm going to listen to this teaching. I'm going to listen to these messages. I'm going to li listen to these messages uh, on, on, on YouTube or, or audio or whatever, I'm going to listen to the messages. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And then it says, and they devoted themselves to fellowship. To the fellowship. How many know fellowship is where brothers and sisters meet together? And that is fellowship. Uh, that's why we always, t always have tea and coffee. <laughs> because when you have tea and coffee, it speaks of fellowship. Because you're having time with each other, you're having a drink, you're chatting, you're, you're, you're talking with each other. Um, that's where the needs are met. To, you know, if you've got a need, you know, you say, I've had a bad week this week, or I need to let this out, you know. And that's what fellowship is. But it's also building each other up. And we build each other up by the word of God and by prayer. Um, and so it says, though they devoted themselves to the fellowship. 
And then he says, they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread and prayer. It's good when we have, we've not got it today, but when we do have communion, you know, that speaks of we remembering Christ, don't we? Every time we have bread or wine, we're remembering what Jesus has done for us on the cross of his sacrifice. And so they devoted themselves to breaking of bread. They devoted themselves to prayer. I mean, you know, that's a good thing to devote ourselves to, is to prayer. And I've said this many times before, you know, prayer is just talking. That's all prayer is. Prayer is like we talk to God, we tell him, you know, uh, we love him, uh, we thank him, uh, we ask to help us in our time of need. Prayer is talking to God. So we can pray wherever we are, walking down the street, driving in the van, <laughs> plastering a ceiling, <laughs> uh, texting a wall, <laughs> uh, shopping in Asda when we shop. You know, we can talk to God wherever, wherever we want. And it says we should devote ourselves to prayer. And prayer is talking to God. And I know there's different ways of praying. We can sit down and pray. We can get on our knees and pray. Uh, we can lie on the floor and pray. Uh, trouble is with that, when I do that, I fall asleep. <laughs> if I lie down, I'm like, oh, that was a long prayer time. You know? <laughs> My body shuts down. <laughs> uh, but prayer is just talking to God. So wherever we are, uh, we can always talk to God. So it says, they devoted themselves to prayer. I mean, you know, it's all a personal choice, this, isn't it? It's a personal decision. And he said, you know what? I'm going to devote myself to prayer. I'm going to pray to God every day, uh, whenever I can. And then, it all, I mean, you know, also, when we pray, it's good to be quiet as well and to be still. Because, you know, if we're doing all the talking, God can't get a word in. <laughs> so, so it's good for us to talk to God and then just be still. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. So sometimes in my prayer, I'll pray and then I'll just sit for five minutes being still. And you know what? You can sense the presence of God when we do that. Just be still and quiet. And you can sense the presence of God. And then verse 43, it says, So, all this was going on in, in the early church. And it says, Everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and miracle signs were done by the apostles. I mean, you know, there was miracles happening all the time in the early church. There were mir miracles was an everyday thing in the early church. Now, sad to say, we don't see this today. Every, every day. We don't see it like it was then in the first church. But then, there were every day a miracle would happen. A, a healing would happen. A something would happen. Why? Because they were meeting together and they were devoting themselves to God and to prayer. And so God was moving in mighty power. He was moving in mighty power to establish his church. And then verse 44 it says, all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Isn't that amazing? All the believers to, were together and, and they would say, Gareth came to it and said, I've got a need. All right, I'll, I'll sell my car, Gareth, here, there's your need. <laughs> that, that's what was happening. I thought, how, how good would that be? You know, and I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen where people have, in a church who was involved in years ago, um, some people sold their homes for the church. They sold the homes and then they sold the homes and then they just rented somewhere for the church. Some gave the cars away and everything. Oh goodness me. So if you if you come our house, I'll give you a cup of tea. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> But, but do you know what? That, that is a personal thing. What was going on here, God just touched their heart and he said, you know what? I'm going to sell this uh, for this brother or sister. And that was a personal thing. Now, I have seen that happen. I've, I've met a brother who sold his home and he ended up 
living in the church where the church was in Salford. He ended up living in one of the spare rooms. So he had a three bedroom house in Bryn and he sold his home, gave his money to the church and he lived in one room in the church. I thought, oh goodness me. He's in glory now, he's been promoted to glory and everything. You know, and I thought, I thought, praise the Lord. I thought, but it's what it's whatever God tells us to do. But no one was in need in the early church. Every need because then they didn't have universal credit. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have all this. The church was the need for the community, and they would go out. They would feed the hungry and the poor, and all the needs were met by the church in them days because they had no welfare. Now, now we've got we're a lot better off now because we have places to help us for people like that. But this is what was going on, and. Uh, and it says, uh, verse 46, Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. So they didn't go to church one day a week, <laughs> like we do. <laughs> um, every day they were meeting together. And I thought, no wonder God was moving in power then. Every day, the church for them, fellowship was their whole life. Now, for us today, we go once or twice a week. It's all changed around. But then, every day, I thought, goodness me. And I often think, I thought, I wonder what time they met every day. Because surely they must have got work as well. <laughs> you know, surely they must have gone to work and then probably met at night or something. You know, but it was, I think, I find it amazing when I read this. It says, every day uh, they met together. In, in the temple courts. And it says, and they broke bread uh, in their homes. So they met together in the temple courts every day. I mean, and it could have been for an hour or something. And they said, you know what, at dinner time, let's all come and meet together. We're all working in the same town. Let's, uh, we'll have a meeting at 12 o'clock. And it could have been something like that. And then they went back to their own, whatever they were doing. I don't know how it worked. But, but then, so they met together in the courts. And then they met in their homes, it says, and they broke bread in their homes and ate together. Now that speaks to me, if they probably had a Bible study once a week or summer. So in someone's house, they had a house group, and they had the Bible study, and they broke bread there at the Bible study. But they were meeting regular. And it says, uh, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, and enjoying the favour of all the people. And it says, And the Lord added to their number daily those who have been saved. You know, that's every church's dream now. To see God saving people and adding people to their church every day. Well, it was happening there. Why? Because they were devoted themselves to God and to the work of the ministry. They devoted themselves to prayer and to teaching. And so God was moving in mighty power. And don't forget, miracles was happening every day. So when people saw the miracles happening, they were saying, Lord, I need you, I need you. So they came to the Lord as well. So that's why it was bursting at the seams, the early church, because it was all happening. And I remember once, many years ago, when we did a, me and Keith did a tent mission in Scott Lane in Wigan on the field there. It was amazing that. We had the tent up. The first night of the meeting, Keith had brought a brand new generator for the mission. It was our old generator packed up. So he bought a new generator. The first day we set it up and everything. And Keith said, go outside and start the generator, Dad. So I went outside. I went, what generator? <laughs> Someone had nicked it! <laughs> Someone had nicked it! The, uh, it's gone, kid, you went, God, no, it's me, lad! <laughs> but praise God, there was a farmer there, uh, well, um, John the farmer was there, he was a farmer, and he had a spur on, so he brought it later on, so we had a generator for the week. But I never forget, um, I was on the park, and I was talking to these group of um, teenagers, and they was asking, what's going on here? What's happening in this tent and everything? And I said, well, it's a gospel meeting. You know, we sing praises to God. Uh, we pray for people. We pray for healing. Uh, we preach the gospel, preach the word. 
And I'll never forget this 16 year old girl. She said, Could God heal me? I said, Why? Well, what's wrong with you? She said, Well, I was born blind in one eye. I only can see out one eye. I said, <clears throat> Anything is possible with God. I said, We're not faith healers or any that rubbish or anything. But we can, what I can guarantee, I said, Come to the meeting on Thursday. We will pray for you. We will lay hands on you. And we will ask God to heal you. And I said, God might heal you there and then. He might not. And he might not heal you. I said, I can't, all I can say, we will pray. And then it's up to God what God does. So anyway, that night came. And our speaker that night was Jim Blackburn, a wonderful man of God. Um, he runs a church in Bryn, Bryn Fellowship. Uh, Jim Blackburn, wonderful man of God. And he was speaking that night. And so at the end of the meeting, he said, if anybody wants prayer for healing, you know, come forward. Anyway, this young girl comes forward. And I never forget it. So Jim laid hands on her, I laid hands on her, and Jim's wife laid hands on her. And we began to pray. Next thing, this girl started to cry and cry. She went, I'm, I'm just seen a blur or an image in this eye but she said I can't see anything through it so he said okay let's pray again so we started praying and then she, next thing she was sobbing away tears flowing she said I can see I can see I can see clearly out this eye and so we were like hallelujah glory to God praise the Lord I said are you sure you can see so she like, put her hand on a good eye she said yeah I can read that and everything she went, praise the Lord. Anyway, all kicked off then. All, she brought 17 friends with her. They was like freaked out. They went, what's happened? How's this happened and everything? I said, it's the power of God. <laughs> I said, it's God by the Holy Spirit. And anyway, later on that night, outside the tent, 17 of her friends accepted Jesus Christ. So I can understand it when you read this uh, in the early church where it says uh, miracles were happening every day, but the Lord was adding every day. Why? Because people saw miracles happening. And we saw it there. A miracle, God did a miracle by giving this girl her sight. The result of that miracle was 17 more miracles. Because how many know the greatest miracle of all is salvation? When we accept Jesus as our Saviour, that is the greatest miracle of all. And praise God for the healing miracles of it. But when they saw that girl, they said, I want Jesus in my life. And they all accepted Christ as their Saviour. And I remember, it was a good week that week. Uh, people getting saved, people getting healed. And afterwards, after the meeting, I remember... Uh, before this mission, me and Keith had written, well, Keith had written to 150 churches in the area asking, do they want to get involved with it? Because we thought if people come to salvation, they will need a church to go to. So we needed a, someone where we could say, well, you go to this church, you go to that church. We had no reply whatsoever from any of the churches, but we carried on anyway. And me and Keith, we, we thought for, for months after, and we kept saying, should we start a church there? Should we start a church? You know, and looking back, we should have done. But we buckled out, we chickened out, because we was involved with other ministers as well. But looking back, we should have started something right there and then, but we didn't. Um, because they needed, I mean, you know, they need teaching. When, you, when you're a young Christian, you need teaching. And so... We should have done something, but we just trust God with them, that in the hands of God. So, so that's the message for today. The early church, they devoted themselves, and we are called to, to devote ourselves to whatever God calls us to do. Wherever God leads us to go, he calls us to devote ourselves to him. So just close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we looked at the early church and how you was moving in mighty power then and lord we know you're the same god today the same god you was there two thousand years ago you're the same god here today lord and you're the same god who heals 
and saves and sets the captives free. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us and everyone watching this video, that, that we would have the same decision, that we would devote ourselves to you, Father, every single day of our lives. Every time, every time we wake up in the morning, that we say, Father, I'm devoting myself to you this day. I'm devoting myself to you and to prayer. And I'm going to walk with you, Father. And let that be our decision every day as we wake up. Lord, I'm devoting myself to you. Show me what you want me to do today. Where you want me to go. Show me what to do, Father. And Father, we pray, Lord, for Lord, for any need that is needed today, whether it's a spiritual need, a physical need, a, a healing need, a, a financial need, I just pray right now, and for anyone who is watching this, I just ask now that God would release his power upon you. If you're in need of healing, I pray now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that God's healing power will be released into your body right now. That his power would flow through your body and that you would receive healing in whatever area of your body that needs healing. And Lord, we, we bring before you our loved ones, Father, for those in need of healing. We ask that you would stretch out your hand upon them and heal them. And release your power and father we pray for anyone watching who's who doesn't know you as savior if you don't know jesus today you can come to know him just say a simple prayer just say jesus i confess that i'm a sinner i repent now of my sins and i turn to you jesus i believe that you died for me on the cross I believe that you rose again on the third day and that you are coming soon. Jesus, I receive you now and I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Father, as we leave this place today, we ask that you would go with us, that your presence would go with us, your love, your peace and your joy. And we pray that your angels will be around us as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, an angel stood before me last night. I was at home praying. And when we were at the church in Norley Hall, I was preaching this one night. And as I was preaching, I lifted up my head and stood right at the back of the church. Was you there that night? I don't know you were. Yeah. And there was an angel stood at the back of the church, massive, and he was stood there with a sword, and he was just stood there. It was probably because he was in Norley Hall. <laughs> he was probably protecting us, like, he was probably protecting, and I've shared this before, and it, it was like a flash, and it, it stopped me in my tracks, it shut me up, <laughs> and I, I just stirred for a moment, and then, it disappeared and I thought, oh goodness me. So when I went home that night and kids were in bed, I lied on the couch and I was just talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, what was all that about today, that angel? I thought, why did, why did you reveal that angel to me? And he said to me, he said, from this day on, Nez, wherever you go, preaching my word, on the streets, in the churches, he says, I'm assigning two angels to be with you. So when I was in Applebed, I said, Lord, I remember them two angels. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had two angels with me, in, with 30,000 gypsies, and there was the <laughs> to protect me. And every time, everywhere I go now, I always remember what God said to me. So there's two angels here today. Can't see him now, but I know that was the promise of God. Anyway, last night, I was sat at home praying, about half twelve last night, I was praying, I opened my eyes, and we stood there again, I went, goodness me, <laughs> and 
I was, I was just stirring. And then the angel held out his hand to me like that. And then he just folded it back and then it vanished. I went, so I don't know what that was about, but the presence of God last night when I was in prayer it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. So we have a good God, don't we? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so praise God. Thank you for watching. And, and